bringing you the latest news from Bucks County, this is the Courier Times Update with Rachel Cannell. This Courier Times Update is brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center in Langhorne, PA. It's your health, expect more. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Rachel Canelli reporting from the Courier Times Newsroom with your news update for Friday, May 24th. Jermaine Jackson, the 20-year-old convicted mastermind behind the murder of Levittown musician Danny DeGennaro, has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. While the life sentence was expected once a jury found Jackson guilty of second-degree murder earlier this week, what has many locals talking on Facebook are the comments made by Jackson's father after the sentencing. In this video shot by our court reporter Lori Mason Schrader, Michael Jackson seems to suggest that race affected the verdict. It was 11 white and one black. All I said, what would happen if it was 11 black African American and only one white? What would have happened with the verdict then if it would have been 11 black African American? What do you think would happen? It probably would have been a different in the verdict. It wasn't so, but I'm not discriminating because, you know, God loves blacks and whites. County jury officials have said that the racial makeup of the jury pool reflects the demographics of Bucks County, where the population is more than 90% white. You can see Lori's full story and video at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. Even though Superstorm Sandy was more than seven months ago, one Bristol Township senior citizen's backyard remained demolished, filled with fallen branches and trees. 73-year-old Bill Glover's insurance carrier told him if he didn't clean it up, he'd lose his policy. So the Christmas Gala, an organization dedicated to helping seniors, teamed up with Keller Williams Realty and other volunteers to help get rid of the debris. I work with uh, Tina Davis's office and they send me referrals. So I got an email from their office and they said, we have this gentleman, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to do for him. I then called Bill and then discovered that he had such a need. Well, the problem is uh, my health. I'm a second time cancer survivor, COPD, my kidneys have shut down, I have very bad health. You're talking that if you hire people thousands of dollars to do all this, which on Social Security I just could not handle. I'm just so grateful. The Christmas Gala budgets almost $10,000 a year toward helping senior citizens. You can read more in Danny Adler's heartwarming story on our website. Neshaminy High School held an armed services commitment ceremony on Thursday, celebrating 17 seniors who pledged their commitment to the military. And for many of the teens, serving their country has become a family affair. Marie Bresnahan will not only have one, but now two sons in the military. Her son Patrick is going into the Marines. Definitely my brother was an inspiration. It's, uh, he went in first and after I saw that he could do it, it was definitely an, an okay for me to step up and do the same thing. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Patrick's grandfather was also a Marine. Patrick, I am very proud of it this time because my husband, his grandfather, was in the Marines many years ago. So it makes me feel sort of great. The 17 seniors will head to their respective military branches following graduation. You can see Christian Menno's story and Alex Finney's video online. For your Bucks County forecast, heading into Memorial Day weekend, we're kicking off the unofficial start of summer with possible showers and cooler temperatures with a high near 67 and a low around 45. Tomorrow will stay cool and breezy with cloudy skies and a high near 65. But the rest of your three-day weekend is looking up for those barbecues and outdoor plans. The sunshine returns Sunday with a high near 70 and Memorial Day should be more of the same sunny skies with a high near 75. When we return, our sports reporter Dan Duncan will be stopping by the newsroom to tell us about a couple of our local baseball team's thrilling tournament runs. You won't want to miss it. High school baseball playoffs can be tough, especially here in Bucks County. It's often won and done, but we have two area teams that are handling the pressure pretty well. And our sports writer Dan Duncan is joining us to tell us a little bit more about that. Thanks for coming in, Dan. Good to be here, Rachel. So one of these teams already made it to states, and now another one's playing today to hopefully get there as well. So tell us about it. Well, Holy Ghost Prep, uh, in just an epic game yesterday, won 3-2 to two over Phoenixville. They played out at Glen Mills. Bottom of the seventh, uh, they won it, and it was a uh, long, drawn-out, very dramatic game. 
two rain delays, a thunder delay. So about quarter till seven, they, they knew they were um, going to states because by virtue of reaching the uh, final four in district, th uh, district one, class 3A, then they get to go to state. So very joyous time for them. Uh, just an amazing achievement. It's a very uh, young team. Really good senior leadership, a lot of sophomores and juniors who've really contributed. So uh, they've really achieved a lot this season. Uh, good for them. And then Council Rock North today plays a big game uh, at Methacton. If they win that, they're in states because they'll have reached the uh, class uh, District 1, Class 4A semifinals. And they had an amazing uh, upset victory over uh, Unionville a couple days ago where they had three home runs and two kids combined for four doubles. So they're a team that continues to get better. Again, reflecting uh, really the the depth of the good area baseball we have in this area. Sounds like a lot of exciting stuff for our area baseball fans and uh, Dan actually caught up with the guys from Holy Ghost Prep after yesterday's game so let's hear what they had to say about their big win. I was very happy that coach showed the confidence in me to lead me in and him and our catcher Jack Siebert called a great game there. It's a very good hitting team and coach kept them off balance all day. It's the fourth time we made it to this district championship ever. But. Timmy pitched a hell of a game. I didn't want him to go down like that. I wanted him to get the win, and it was just a great team win. I was just looking to pick up John, and John made a heck of a run down the base pass to win it. I think uh, what helped us was Timmy going the distance and uh, some key hits when we needed him. And, uh, came up in the clutch, and we got a nice, solid team win. You can follow Dan's coverage of local high school baseball playoffs at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. Sticking with high school sports but switching gears to volleyball, the unstoppable force that is Pensbury's boys volleyball team continued to roll on Thursday night, defeating second seed Central Bucks West in straight sets to improve to 17-0 on the season and lay claim to the District 1 title. Oh my goodness, yeah, very. It felt very good. You know, it's been uh, since 09 since we won a district title. Now, I, we don't always do our best after we win a district title in, in, in the history of Pensbury, but I, I talked to the, the guys about this too. I said, let's, let's start new history. I'm happy. I mean, I expected to win though. Like, I expect to win every game. So, I mean, I would have been more disappointed that I am ha than I am happy, if you know what I mean. But I am definitely happy. It's nice to meet your goals. Next goals, states. So, goal number two is down. There's three goals. There's always three goals. There's one more championship to win. You want to end the season with a win, not a loss. Now we know the stakes are a little bit higher. You know, you, you lose, you're out now. So, I mean, I, I keep telling these guys that we just want to play our game. We don't want to put extra pressure on ourselves and expect, you know, people expect you to win, we expect to win, but we don't want to think that way. We want to have a nice positive feeling moving forward. The Falcons will return to Warminster Wednesday night to take on the fourth place finisher from District 3 in the first round of the state tournament. You can see Jen Wilgus' full video as well as reporter Rick Wolfel's entire game recap on our website. Now here's a look at what we're working on in the newsroom. Our heroin series starts Sunday. We look at the drug problem in the suburbs with comments from recovering addicts, school officials, law enforcement, and more. Reporters Marion Callahan, Danny Adler, Matt Coughlin, Teresa Hagel, and Lori Mason Schrader will have all of those stories for you. A state panel has ruled that a Bucks County worker fired for allegedly misusing subpoenas will now receive a year of unemployment benefits. Reporter Jim McGinnis will have more info on that. And finally, we'll be covering Memorial Day parades in Tullytown and Pendell this weekend, as well as a decorated dock contest at the Neshaminy Harbor Yacht Club in Ben Salem to mark the holiday. We'll be off for the holiday, so keep checking BucksCountyCourierTimes.com for updates on all of these stories and Memorial Day activities, or follow me on Twitter for your latest local news. I'm Rachel Canelli. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the holiday weekend. We'll see you Tuesday.